Okay. So welcome again to this session, num probably number six of our video chats. And uh, so I'm, I'm open for your questions. So you remember that this week we started working on the server side. This was a very intense week where we learned a lot of what happens on the server and uh, all the, say the, the basic works in, workings of the Express Web Service node. Uh, and of the REST uh, um, strategy for defining the APIs for the front-end working. Okay. Next week will be a bit lighter because we just have to see what happens on the on the front-end. So we just uh, add a couple, a couple of functions on the front-end and, and we can close the exercise. Uh, so this is a two-week effort uh, for that. And then we can move to, to React. Um, so, uh, does anybody has uh, questions or requests for this week? So Enrico is asking whether we have to implement a, a new project for the lab number five. Uh, I think it's uh, probably uh, compa compared to the lab number four where uh, you already have some uh, tasks uh, related activity. I think it's probably better to start from an empty project and maybe then copy and paste some, some parts. Uh, for example, all the parts that you have in lab four uh, will be reused in lab number six uh, when you develop the front end. So but that will be part of the client subdirectory uh, in the project. So maybe I think it's better to start from scratch a new Express project and new empty project in lab, in lab five. And then you, you will see that in lab six, uh, you will have to uh, recover some pieces of, of code, all the front end, all the HTML uh, from lab four to lab six, but then you can integrate them uh, better. Also, from now on, we, we are able to use the modules. So also the, the way of importing the JavaScript files will be better. And, uh, and so we just pick the, 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 play, the, the, the pieces that we developed uh, up to lab four and we'll uh, join them into uh, six. But it's better, I think, to start from scratch on the server because it's actually a different application. The server side is a different application, so it's better to start from, a, from an, empty pro, an empty project. Yes, uh, maybe you can reuse some classes. So if you add a class for task, it's just a JavaScript class, you can just convert it to a, to a common JS module, to a, to a node module. And if you want to, if you need not to implement uh, in the example that we saw uh, that they've made uh, in the in the in the example lecture where we had the the, the, um, the exam score uh, example, I didn't use classes uh, for representing objects. Uh, just for I just created literal objects uh, to be serialized. But since you already have all the classes defined, maybe you can reuse them. So you can pick what the classes that up to yesterday were used on the on the, on the client side. You can just uh, uh, use them also and on the server side, but uh, as a uh, node module, hmm? so with the with the import with the required statement. And <clears throat> do we have to, uh, to install uh, the Express middleware for every new JavaScript program? Um, yes, and, uh, I mean um, every application is made of a server and a client, uh, and uh, the server uh, in our in this course, just for uh, for make it simple, uh, will run with Express. So uh, we we'll have the, the node um, runtime that will uh, need the, the Express library, and so every time, <clears throat> and this is one bad uh, probably aspect of, of of JavaScript because in every project uh, you have a very big node modules directory where you have to reinstall uh, all the packages uh, that your project depends on. Uh, but it's also the, the good part because uh, you have then this uh, packet.json file hmm, uh, that is managed automatically by NPM. So whenever you do an NPM install something, it will add the dependency to the uh, node, uh, um, to the 
package.json file. And so if you move your project, you can move just your code without the node modules directory. You move it somewhere else, you, do, you just write npm install, and then it will download everything it needs for the project. So it's a big waste of, of this space, of course, it's a big waste of downloads, but uh, um, it's, uh, it's safer because in every directory you have uh, everything that you need in every project. And so, yes, every application will have uh, an express running. Even if most of the work uh, we will do is on the front end, uh, we see that also for, no, we, we, we experienced in Lab 4 that uh, uh, even just for importing a module, you need a server mm, to serve it. So the, the answer is yes, it will, uh, uh, we will, uh, from now on, we will always use a client server program. And also React will not work without a uh, proper server, basically for, for the importing mechanisms. So even if all the logic is in the front end, uh, <clears throat> importing modules requires uh, to have a server. Uh, so the, the other question from Pierluigi is whether uh, Express supports HTTPS. Of course, it does. Uh, it's uh, it's a matter of getting a certificate and installing it uh, there. So uh, it, it can it can be done, of course. Um, <clears throat> but for for test programs, it's always a, a longer. Because getting a certificate is not something that you can do in uh, 10 seconds. And if you get a self-signed certificate, then the, the browser will complain because it's not signed by certificate authority. So uh, usually we, we develop uh, with HTTP. And then we, when we need to deploy something, of course, we put it behind the HTTPS. Um, just remember that Express is not made for high volume performance. So uh, usually what you have uh, in, in real uh, say deployments uh, is, a, is a proxy web server. So you have one front-facing web server, maybe Nginx or Apache, which are much more performant, uh, that will process uh, maybe all the HTTPS connections and the static files. They will serve static files directly. It will be another front server written, written in C for, for efficiency reasons. And then um, it will work as a reverse proxy and so all the calls uh, on a given, maybe on the API subdirectory, will be rerouted to the Node.js module. At this point, the Node.js will only answer to local calls from the front-end um, web server. So uh, all the also authentication and encryption it will normally is done by front-end web servers that handle static files and uh, connections. And uh, uh, it will, uh, Node will be in the, in the second front line and will only accept requests from the front-end servers in general architectures. But uh, we are not play, now play, just playing for the moment. So, but it, 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 does, it does support HTTPS, but uh, if you need to use it, it means that you are uh, developing a, a really public-facing website. And so it's probably to reconsider the, the architecture on the server side and make something more robust. Yes, 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 Enrico. Yeah, uh, you can uh, you can uh, set up the Apache front end and uh, identify a directory to act as a reverse proxy that will just uh, reroute the request, some, some requests on some path to the Express. So the Express will only serve uh, those requests that are uh, are really dynamic. So, so you, you it will not be loaded with static requests and so on. But I think there's already enough meat <laughs> in this course not to also uh, create complex server applications.
Any other questions? The problem with Morgan that didn't work in the video lecture, <laughs> it was a stupid problem. I didn't save the file, okay? <laughs> so I modified the, the JavaScript file. Uh, I, I rerun it, but I didn't save uh, the, 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 the modified file. And so of course, the, I was running the previous version. <laughs> and uh, actually it was, uh, uh, if, if you check the code on GitHub, uh, it's actually the same that we showed. So, um, and the problem is that when when the recording the lecture is very uh, you have to keep your attention on, on many details and uh, and sometimes also the stupid things uh, uh, but in, in that case it was uh, so there were there were two two, two mistakes now one one it was that one and the other was uh, worse uh, when um, i forgot the parentheses in express.json and uh, in some example there were just uh, uh, app.user Express.json without the parentheses. And it didn't work because, of course, you need the, to call the JSON function to have the, the middleware installed, uh, but it didn't give any 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 response. So uh, that, that was bad because uh, uh, there were no errors for that. So simply, the web server didn't uh, answer. And this is the bad uh, part of, uh, of JavaScript, uh, that in many cases, uh, it just dies or just does nothing uh, because it finds an undefined value and uh, it doesn't give you those nice uh, uh, probably I, I, I'm really uh, uh, I have nostalgia of the null pointer exceptions in Java that at least they block the problem saying there's something wrong here and in JavaScript many times it doesn't give an exception and so uh, understanding what's wrong uh, uh, it's much more difficult uh, to debug, especially during now that we have asynchronous behaviors on the client and asynchronous behaviors on the server. Um, even setting a breakpoint is not so easy because uh, something uh, is not easy to make it happen at the right time. So that is a problem in the in JavaScript language itself. It's so so much dynamic that it's easy to 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 uh, to make static mistakes. Uh, and that pass undetected. By the way, you, you remember that next week we will change a bit the schedule because the the first of uh, of May is uh, on Friday. Okay, so the lab number six will be on the 30th of April. It will be on the Thursday, and so the video chat for the Thursday will not uh, take place. And so of course, you can contact us and ask questions on on, on Slack uh, whenever you want. Okay, so but the next week uh, the video chat will will uh, will skip. And at the same time, I'm some, some, somehow maybe considering whether this video chat moment is uh, useful for you or, uh, or maybe it's not in the right uh, time slot because maybe today people are trying to uh, follow the lectures and try maybe start working on the exercise so they won't have time to connect here. So maybe it's, it's not in the best slot. So if you can help me, uh, also giving feedback about uh, if you feel, of course, uh, you are a small group of people and they are connected today, so they are not, uh, um, but might be discussing among you uh, if you have uh, some suggestion to make this uh, interactive moment uh, more useful, I, I'm very open to, to consider them. Uh, <clears throat> one idea that I had is to transform the video chat into an exercise. So instead of like, you know, there was the, the, the last video where I developed one exercise in video. We could do that uh, maybe in an uh, in interactive, in interactive way so that you can 
also ask questions during the development. It will be difficult to, to organize because uh, keeping the, the focus on the development and on the interaction uh, will be challenging, but uh, if we find that it would be, it could be more useful, then we can move uh, uh, or transform the video chat from a just Q&A question session into an, uh, developing an exercise together. So, but if you have any, any, other, any other ideas to make it uh, more useful for you, uh, of course, uh, I'm available for that. Uh, Marco uh, is asking uh, whether it's possible to give the project specification before the end of the lessons. Uh, yes, the idea is uh, to uh, publish uh, the specification of the project uh, uh, two or three weeks before the date of the exam. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not sure about three, <laughs> but uh, uh, probably uh, two is, uh, of course, uh, the minimum uh, amount of time. So we will, you will have two weeks uh, uh, to work on the project uh, before before the, the submission date. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we we don't know yet the dates of the first uh, of the first exam. Uh, so maybe maybe we also have the the, the first uh, specification uh, before the end of the course, if the first date is is really soon. Mm -hmm. Um, we want to keep a, a fixed uh, amount of time in in all the, the um, in all the exams. Okay, so it will be two weeks for the first and for the second date, and also for September, so that uh, <clears throat> so the, the the available time is is the same in all the in all the exam days uh, in all the possible exam days. So, but uh, of course, we'll try to to give you some time to to work, and and during that period, you probably. Uh, we will find some moments maybe to ask uh, to 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 answer questions or to solve issues about the interpretation of the text for, uh, uh, not normally um, during the end of the course we will do also some simulation okay so also of the way of uh, uh, of um, of submitting the project uh, through github we think we used uh, we are going to use the github classroom uh, for for giving you the exercise and for getting the um, the results back and so or even for the practical things uh, we'll need to do to do some checks before so and some trial before yes um, um, when, uh, when we see the dates uh, it's probably we, we can okay when we see the dates of the exams uh, we'll probably be more precise about that but we hope uh, we don't have too many overlaps uh, with other with other exams and for the, uh, uh, just since you are trying to <laughs> organize your time after the submission, of course we will have some several days probably of uh, oral discussions, and uh, because uh, maybe especially in the first days or the second one there will be a lot of people, and uh, uh, we cannot do, do all of them probably in the same day because they're... and uh, so it, it may happen. Depends on the date. It may happen that the, the specification for the second exam uh, will be out uh, before the first exam is finished. Before we, we finish doing all the all the oral discussions of the first one, and so it will be a bit uh, you know, uh, uncomfortable because uh, you maybe some of you still has to do the the exam, the oral exam, and we we'll still maybe start thinking about whether to start working on the project for the next one. But uh, unfortunately, we cannot expand the weeks. So we'll try to have the dates as far as possible from each other, but we are really not in control of the dates. So let's see what, what they give us and try to make the best of what uh, we get. Uh, I, the session should start uh, about the, um, the, 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 the scheduled date. So right now, I didn't hear anybody saying that the end of the lecture will change or the start of the session will change. So it will be a, should be exactly as planned in the in the calendar, in the official calendar. Thank <laughs> you. 
Are there any other issues? Will, uh, the question from Pierluigi, will everyone have the oral discussion? Yes, uh, because it's the only way for us to be sure that the project you submit uh, was actually from your own fingers and brains. And uh, it will not be an oral where we ask, uh, say, additional further questions. It will be a discussion of the project so that we can ask you questions about your project and so we may check whether you understood, actually understood what you have been submitting. Uh, there is no other ways to be sure okay, that what you submit is actually your work rather than checking whether you actually know it. So we are forced to do that for everybody. Uh, probably what we will do is something of a pre-evaluation of the projects uh, where we do a first uh, scoring of the project itself uh, so that people may understand whether the project is good or not and so they can uh, say uh, back off from the exam and uh, refuse the the score so we don't uh, if the score of the project is not good and uh, maybe you can decide uh, okay I don't want to to take the the oral test and we just uh, okay refuse the score and go to the next but then it would be so uh, the cases in which we will not have the uh, the oral discussion is uh, if uh, the project is not sufficient of course uh, or if the score that you give to the project is not enough for you, and so you say, okay, I, I do my computation, I do my math, and see that the, the, the top score I can get is maybe 24, I want something best, better, so I don't want to, I, I won't go to the oral now, and uh, because I won't reach uh, the score that I want, and I go to the next. So uh, and the, the second case will be up to you. But for everybody else, uh, for registering a score, we must, uh, be sure uh, that uh, the identity of the person and the identity of the of the project is the same we we found no other ways we don't like it because it's a lot of time spent but uh, Okay. Do you think we should close the session if there are no further questions? So you can start, <laughs> you can work on lab members, uh, number five. Okay, so I, I won't keep you idling here. If uh, so, if you have any questions, but uh, I don't see any new ones. Uh, but uh, we know that we have the Slack channel open uh, anytime. We still have one one question from from Castelli to to answer. I think if uh, my colleague didn't answer that uh, overnight, but uh, we'll try to support you also in that way. Okay, so. As I said, I'm open for suggestions on how to improve the interaction with you in next weeks. 
uh, and by default we we do, we won't have this chat next Thursday because there will be the lab. Okay, so we we'll see in uh, in uh, two weeks. Okay, so uh, have a nice day. There's the sun, the sun shining outside, so you can look through the window. Bye bye. See you in a couple of weeks. <laughs>